And you know, my brother, Professor Machoma, is really, you know, we really need to give it to that man. Because he has really uh, faced the bull by the horns. He is slaying the dragon in terms of mismanagement of our public universities. In terms of transforming the way we finance our public universities. And so therefore, I'm also asking public universities, which are also state corporations. The government is doing its part. The president is doing his part. The minister is doing his part. Now it's up to you. There is no excuse. There is no excuse for not having prudent financial management. Through the new uh, financing scheme for our universities, we are sure that our universities can be a fruit. We are sure that our universities can, 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 can break even. So they have got to call all the members from the councils, from our universities, and all of us really, to really uh, put special emphasis on this issue of uh, financial prudence. And not just because it's a presidential directive. This year, KRA, and I don't know whether KRA is here, we are going to have 3 million, 3 trillion. At best, best our target is 3 trillion of ordinary revenue. Through e-citizen, we will increase revenue available for us to carry out programs for development by 50%. 1.5 trillion to be added, yeah, available for us. If we get the 3 trillion and we add 1.5 trillion through e-citizen, we can pay our debts, we can stop borrowing, we can give more attention to uh, development, and we can try to turn around this economy. So please, this issue of e-citizen is not an issue of compliance. It is an issue of patriotism. If you love this country, please give special attention to this issue of being an e-citizen, to this issue of digital migration, to this issue of digitization of our services. Today, 5% of you are giving dividends to government. 5%. Yet, Kenya Commercial Bank, for which we, Kenya government only owns 17%, it is giving more dividends to government than all of you combined. Because people who are there and who are using their brain that time, they privatized Kenya Commercial Bank, which one day was a full-fledged uh, parasite. Today, Kenya government owns only that 5% of Safaricom. Safaricom gives Kenya government more dividends than all of you combined. KICC, before we had the climate summit, it was known more for the Mende and the rats that are, you know, running inside that beauty. When we try to privatize Timunauza, it is our heritage. Is Fubate your heritage? Is Fubate your destiny? I want someone here to tell me, I am so proud, don't sell poverty. Poverty is inheritance I got from my grandfather. How can you sell my piece of poverty? I want to be quitted to my children. To me, I kill you. Let us do what is sensible. We must democratize this society. Democratizing society means it's not here in Naivasha, in Nairobi, in Mombasa. Mpaka Mashinani. That is why I am very happy with what we are doing with the judiciary, giving access to justice to everyone. Ata Yule Mutu, who is not represented here, he is not represented on Twitter, Haiko Kwa Tikto, Nakwa Instagram, Ata Hao, Wakona Nafas. And we must give light and voice to all those people who are not in the table. Because the problem in this country, if you make yourself to the table, you only come with your agenda. And all the other Kenyans are on the menu. Now I'm saying it is a time for all of us. You who is on the table, Kenyans who are not there, everybody who is on the table, not on the menu. ICS is committing to promoting the practice of good governance in our state corporations, just like I've, I've said. This year, 2024, the Institute has lined up a series of trainings relevant to the board members, senior management and secretariats in state corporations 
and we have we have got the information which will be shared with all of you. I I, I don't want to uh, get into that detail, but some of them are touching on uh, board evaluation, which is very key. And actually, the discussion today I had with the uh, FCS uh, Simon Limoni and the chair is that uh, after this induction, what is next for our country? And we were saying, after you have all been trained and considering the budget that you normally expend in the interest of the public, the next stage should be to find out what is the impact of this training. And therefore, board evaluation comes into being. Those academicians who are here, I wish to mention that uh, probably those who are doing uh, PhDs and so on and so forth, that's a subject matter you can research on and give us an authoritative outcome so that as a country, we are able to speak from a point of knowledge. And uh, sir, we are also uh, assisting our uh, neighbors like Tanzania and Uganda so that uh, they also come into the same platform so that when we are talking about governance issues, it becomes an agenda at the East African community. The purpose of this training is to, be, to try and consolidate the thinking of all public service towards delivery of the Kenya Quantum Manifest. The better agenda and we are sensitizing and taking this board members and CEOs through this uh, Mongoza training to reinforce on corporate governance, reinforce on the integrity of board members so that they can deliver on the agenda of this government. We have the pleasure, honorable CS, to have people here drawn from various experiences, various uh, fields of expertise. You know, the chairs and the directors and everybody, they are drawn from public service, those who have been in public service, private sector, uh, some of them even businessmen. And it is important that we take them through this training so that they understand how public service 